is the first video looking at logarithm revision for A-level students. So these videos are aimed at students doing A-level mathematic courses or equivalent courses around the age of 17 to 18. You're reminded the intention is not to teach logarithms, but rather to demonstrate how you might solve typical problems that come up in examinations. There is a separate video series on logarithms and exponentials if you want to understand these functions in more detail, and you'll see that on the website. So what's the exam technique? When you answer a question, first of all, you should set out two things very carefully. What information is provided in the question? And secondly, but equally important, what information or knowledge it's assumed you already have? Now, when you combine these two together, it's usually obvious how to answer a question. And then the mistake students usually make is they don't do two before they try to answer the question, and then they don't know where to start. So first of all, make sure you write down both of these before you begin to answer, and then you'll know where to start. And we'll demonstrate that as we go. So some key formula. Always write down the key logarithm formula next to any question data provided, because if you do that, it will be obvious which of these you need. So what are the key formula? Well, you should know the definition. The log of a number, so you can see I've done log to the base x of a number, capital A, gives me little a, is the same as saying little x to the power little a equals capital A. So those two statements are equivalent, and that's the definition of a log function. So you need to be familiar with that one. Uh, by the by, if you take the log of 1, you will always get 0. So quite often that will come up, and it's useful to be aware of it. Then you have the product rule. If you take the log of a product of two numbers, so you see here I've done a times b, it's the same as doing the log of a plus the log of b. So that's the product rule. You've also got the quotient rule. If you divide two numbers, take the log of a divided by b, it's the same as doing the log of a minus the log of b. So that one's called the quotient rule. You also have this power rule. If you take log to the base x of a to the power k, it's the same as doing k times log to the base x of a. And the final one is just an observation. If you take the log of the same number, so you can see log x of x, you will always get 1, no matter what x is, whether it's 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. And if you combine that observation with this one in the yellow box, you will also get that log x of x to the power r is just r. So these are the key formula on this page that you might need to use when you're answering any question. So what I'm saying is always make sure you're familiar with these formula. You can write them down quickly, and then it will be obvious which ones you need when you get a question. First question then, find, giving your answer to three significant figures, the values for x for which 2 to the power x equals 5. So let's look at our technique. These types of questions simply use the logarithm of a power function. So you'll remember the definition of a log actually had an equivalent power. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this particular law here. You remember there was a, a law which used powers <coughs> that said log, and here I've put base b, <coughs> it doesn't matter what b is, of a to the power k equals k log to the base b of a. And why have I used that rule? Because I can see I've got a 2 to the x, so therefore I want the log which has that power in it. So I'm going to apply that one. So let's see how we do this. I've got 2 to the x equals 5. And now what I'm going to do is take logs of both sides. So I'm going to go log of 2 to the x equals log of 5. And then I can apply my power law, so I get x log 2 equals log 5, or x equals log 5 over log 2. 2. And if you actually put that in your calculator, you'll find that x equals 2.322. Now, the key thing here is I actually haven't said what the base of the log is. And 
The point is you can use whatever base you like. So I'm putting a B in here, but on your calculator you'll probably have log to the base E or log to the base 10. But it doesn't matter at this stage. You can use any base and you will still get the same answer. OK, what about this question? Very similar. 4 to the y equals 0.21. So again, you'll see it's the same sort of question. We want the same sort of technique. So I'm going to use this particular rule. So let's write down what we get then. So I'm going to do log of 4 to the power y equals log of 0.21. And again, you can use whatever base of log you want, which is why I've not put the base in here. So I'm going to get y equals log, so that was a typo, sorry, y times log 4 equals log of 0.21 or y equals log of 0.21 divided by log of 4. And if you solve that, you'll get y equals minus 1.126. Now, I've made the question slightly more complicated, not a lot more complicated, but just a little. You'll see now I've got 6 to the power x minus 1 equals 4, but it's still the same type of problem. You see I've got an index or a power function, and therefore I'm going to use the same technique as before. What log property do I need? I need this one here, that log to the base b of a to the power k is k times log to the base b. Of a. So I'm just going to plug that in straight as before and see what we get. So I'm going to get log of 6 to the power x minus 1 equals log of 4 or x minus 1 into log 6 equals log 4. So that's using this rule in the yellow box. And therefore x minus 1 equals log 4 over log 6. And to finish, obviously, x equals 1 plus log 4 over log 6. And again, you can use whichever base on the log you choose. And the answer you'll get here is x equals 1.774. Again, just for completeness, a similar question, just to demonstrate that the same technique will hold. So the first thing to do, write down before you start the log property that you're intending to use. Now the examiner might give you some credit for that because they say, OK, you've recognised the property you're supposed to be using and then it becomes transparent. So now I can write log of 10 to the 2y plus 3 equals log of 0.54 or 2y plus 3 into log 10 equals log 0.54. Now, if I do in a little aside here, it might be logical here to use log 10 because log 10 of 10 equals 1, and that will simplify my algebra a little. So that's something that you might want to do. You don't have to, but you can. So what I'm going to do is I'll use that assumption so I can get rid of that log 10 because it's now just 1. So now, what have I got? I've got 2y equals log 10, 0.54 minus 3, or y equals log 10, 0.54 minus 3, all over 2. And if you calculate that, what you'll find you get is minus 1.63. Four. Next question. Now this one again is we're just slightly ramping up the difficulty as we go. So you'll see now I've got a 5 to the x plus 1 on the left and a 2 to the x on the right. But we're going to use an identical technique. We're going to say what formula do we need? And you can see we've got a power function. So the logical formula is the log of a power function, which is the same formula we've used throughout. So therefore, I'm going to write log of 5 to the x plus 1 equals log of 2 to the power x. And therefore, x plus 1 into log 5 equals x into log 
2. Now, if I want to solve for x, your problem here is you say, oh, I've got x's on both sides. So let's put all the x's on the same side. So I've got x log 5 minus x log 2 equals minus log 5. And then, of course, I can use brackets to extract the x. So I've got x into log 5 minus log 2 equals minus log 5. And so finally, x equals minus log 5 divided by log 5 minus log 2. And if you solve that, you'll get minus 1.757. And again, you can use whichever log you want here, log to the base e, log to the base 10, or whatever. It will not change the answer. Final question then, and you see we've just made it just a tiny bit more complicated again, but you'll recognize we've got the same technique. Because we have a power function, we're going to use the log of a power function. So write it down before you start. Write this down, and the examiner can see what you're doing. So now I'm going to get log of 10 to the power 2y minus 3 equals log of 8 to the y plus 1. And use my log rule. So I get 2y minus 3 into log 10 equals y plus 1 into log 8. Now this looks a little bit messy, but don't worry about it too much. It's simple algebraic manipulation. You can see I've got a y here and a y here. So all I want to do is get the y's on the same side. So I'm going to write something like y into 2 log 10, so that's the bit on the left, minus log 8, so that's the y from the right, and then I'm going to move all the other bits to the right, so I've got log 8 plus 3 log 10. Now it might take you one more step to do that, but as you get more experienced, you'll be able to do these things more quickly, and therefore it should be clear that y equals log 8 plus 3 log 10, all divided by 2 log 10 minus log 8. Now again, in this particular case, you might be tempted to use log to the base 10, because log to the base 10 of 10 equals 1. And of course, if you were to do that, that number becomes 2, and that number becomes 3, and it makes your algebra just that little bit easier. But that's not compulsory. That's up to you. So. We've finished this particular video, and if you want some slightly more challenging questions, go to the next video.